Hi booktube, my name is Juan, I am Just One Reader, coming to you with another Friday Reads video. I'm gonna tell you about the books that I finished reading this week, as well as what I am currently reading right now. So let's start with uh, The Language of Dying by Sarah Pinbro. This was the first book that I completed this week. This is a very short novella, uh, and it's following a middle-aged woman as she witnesses her father passing away. So it's a story about a father figure dying and we get to see the family's history, the family's, uh, the family's dynamic via flashback and some family members come to the house where the father is dying to say goodbye. And so we get to experience some of the tensions within this family and their stories. And in the end, it is a story about uh, facing death and facing the unknown of death. That premise seems really good and really interesting, but I have to say I found this book quite bland. I don't think it's a bad book by any means. I think that in some places the writing is actually pretty good and um, there are some, some interesting uh, lines of writing in here that I liked, but in the end, it's just a very um, bland book. I, I don't think it does anything quite interesting or compelling enough. It's not a book that I necessarily regret reading, but it's also not a book that I can see why. I mean, what was the point in reading this? I don't think I was moved or changed. I found it in some places very melodramatic and sentimental and that that just that was a restraint for me as a reader. So, I don't know what to say about this book in terms of whether I would recommend it or not. I guess I would recommend it because of the premise because it is short. It can it can probably work better for some other readers, but for me I I was just missing something. So, I gave this book, I don't even remember, somewhere between two and three stars. I don't think it's that compelling or interesting. It doesn't do anything really surprising. So it was a bland book. And then I read a book um, that I was very disappointing. This was A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. And I was really looking forward to this book because um, Paul Tremblay is uh, an author who is considered to be a great, a great voice in uh, horror and sci-fi and you know thriller, this kind of genre. And I really wanted to read something fun, something compelling, something with with bite, with you know a good mystery and and chilling vibes. And I actually heard that this book had pretty good reviews. <sighs> this was very bad. I gave this book two stars, and I think that was a very generous rating for me. Let me tell you what this book is about, um, because that's the good part, the concept. So the concept or premise of this book is that we have a family. Um, they are a struggling family economically, financially. They are going through some difficult times and one of the daughters of the family starts having some, uh, some mental problems. Um, it's not exactly sure if she's experiencing uh, schizophrenia, but it, it pretty much feels like schizophrenia. Um, and they cannot afford proper uh, treatment for her. So they receive an offer to make a, a TV reality show out of an exorcism. So uh, a priest comes to the house and they do an exorcism on this girl who has mental, uh, mental illness. And, um, and that's the way that they try to deal with that. And so there's, there's many different aspects to this book. There's the family dynamic, which I think was the most interesting part. There's the mental illness, question mark, uh, diabolical possession, it's unsure, um, which is silly. And then there's the reality TV show element, which is discussed through a blog 
that we read so we get to see like recaps of the the show the the tv episodes and so it's a book that tries to do many things at once and that i think was commendable but in the end i found this book so boring uninteresting bland mediocre the writing it, it all comes down to the writing i mean this is a very clear example to me of a very interesting concept that was just not properly treated and very badly executed. I mean, the writing was so poor, so poor. It was, uh, it, it felt ridiculous. Also, um, the book tries to do something in the end, like a plot twist, like a kind of revelation. And by the point in the book where that thing came, I was just so disconnected with the book that I didn't really care about the, the turn anymore. I didn't care about the twist. So in the end, I was profoundly dissatisfied with this book. I think the author tries to do many things very quickly and it's it's just completely unbelievable. And it's, it's not the kind of horror or, or thriller or genre thing that I would recommend. Um, it's not good. It's not a good book. I'm sorry, I gave it two stars. And again, that was a very generous rating. And then I read a book that I really enjoyed, but I also found myself having some problems with. And that was The Humans by Mad Haig. This book is very charming and it, it's actually really enjoyable. Um, at least the, the first half is really, really enjoyable. And I would recommend this book. I think a lot of people would love this book. So uh, The Humans by Matt Haig is essentially a story about an alien who comes to Earth um, on a mission. And the, aliens, uh, the, the alien sort of takes hold of a, a, a mathematician's body and starts interacting through his body. So it's like um, he inhabits this this body of this um, uh, professor, mathematician, uh, college professor, and starts interacting with the world. And that is uh, a very good gimmick. It's an excuse so that the author, Matt Haig, can give some commentary on human existence, human interactions, um, human, the human condition, you know, everything. Um, so in a way, the book has a gimmick. Uh, it has a conceit that I enjoyed. I think it was very well done at the beginning because we get to see our human existence from another perspective, you know, from, from an alien. So it's, it's like we, it's like the author is trying to question uh, things that maybe we haven't questioned before. So he starts delivering very insightful and hilarious commentary on many di different topics of the human existence. So in that regard, um, the book was successful. Um, I don't think it's a laugh out loud book. I, I never found myself actually laughing, but I did find it funny and I did find it charming. However, there comes a point, like halfway through the novel, where I guess the author realized that he had been doing a gimmick and, you know, he, he had been forgetting about the plot. And so he started really going for plot and re it just felt like it was a different book. Um, like he was trying to propel and force a story that became overly sweet overly sugary, sentimental, melodramatic, and so unbelievable. And I really didn't like the, the second half of this book. It just became another thing. I felt like the author was betraying what he had previously done. It became so over sentimental and sweet and ugh, irksome. I, I was very annoyed with the final chapters of this book because of course, the alien becomes uh, becomes enamored with humanity and, uh, it, but it's done in a way that didn't feel germane to the story. It didn't feel real. So in the end, 
I feel very conflicted about this book. Uh, it's a book that does many great things really well, but then it turns into a shit show. So I, I gave this book three stars. I think it's fine, um, but it has a lot of problems. So those are the three books that I read this week. And now let me tell you what I am currently reading um, because it's it's really good. It's really promising. So firstly, I am reading Char um, I'm reading David Copperfield by Charles Dickens in this beautiful Everyman's Library edition. This book is 900 pages long and I am reading a chapter a day, more or less. Sometimes I read more. But I try to read at least one chapter every day. Um, so I am currently on page 100. And I am absolutely loving this book. It's so charming and beautifully written. I love how quaint it feels. But it, it's also very insightful. Um, this book was also written around more or less around the same uh, the same time period when Freud was, uh, I think it was written before Freud, of course. But anyway, it you can see, yeah, this was written right, right around when Freud was uh, starting to f formulate some of his ideas. And you can see how uh, this characters depicted in, in David Copperfield and the way that they are treated it's very reminiscent of Freudian literature as well. You know, there. when I'm reading this book, I'm thinking constantly of Freud and how he started to think about things. Um, so I am loving this book. I, I cannot wait to continue and, and uh, be able to give you more thoughts on it, but it's so good. It's so good and I am so happy that I have finally uh, defeated my resistance to read Dickens. Then I am also reading Buddies by Ethan Morton. Ethan Morton is the author of a book that I read, I think two years ago, and I really loved it. It's a book on Stephen Sondheim, and I, I loved his writing style. And this book is a mixture of fiction and nonfiction. It's a collection of pieces. Some of them are stories, some of them are anecdotes, but they all have to do, they deal with um, with gay people, gay men, they deal with the gay experience, uh, gay solitude, and also gay um, friendships, gay uh, interactions of many different kinds. Um, they are set in New York, so there's a lot to enjoy in, in this story so far. Um, I am really enjoying it. I think there is a lot of really interesting, insightful uh, commentary. This was written in the, in the 80s. So it's, it's, it also feels a little bit like historical fiction or nonfiction in a way because we get to see a Manhattan culture and society that has developed quite a lot since the 80s. Um, I mean, we, we get to see it in the 80s and we compare it to what we now know. So it's a very interesting book. Um, it's it's very well written. I mean, Ethan Morton is a very precious kind of writer. His, his writing style feels very crafted and almost scholarly. So it, it is sometimes a little bit challenging, I have to say, but I'm really, really liking it so far. And finally, the other book that I'm reading right now is in Spanish. This is Un Psicoanalista en el Divan, uh, which translates to a psychoanalyst on the couch. And this is essentially a transcript of interviews that the author conducted with um, uh, a very famous psychoanalyst, um, Lacanian psychoanalyst, Juan David Nacio. He's a very popular psychoanalyst working today. He has written many, many, many books. He's a best-selling author. He's a best-selling psychoanalyst. He's Argentinian, but he has lived in Paris for many, many years. Um, and he, this is an interesting book because it's very short and it's a very simple introduction 
general introduction to contemporary, more contemporary psychoanalysis. Um, I am enjoying it. It's nothing revelatory, but I do enjoy reading his point of view. He's a very experienced senior analyst, and you can still see the passion, um, the enthusiasm that he has for what he does and how he writes about it. Um, also, for me personally, this book is very interesting because I am I don't follow that particular school of thought in psychoanalysis that he follows. He's a French, uh, he follows a, a, a French psychoanalytical school of thought, um, you know, Jacques Lacan. And I don't really follow that line. I, I am more of an, uh, an English, British psychoanalytical thought kind of psychoanalyst myself. But it's interesting to read about different schools of thought within psychoanalysis because we enrich our experience. It certainly has enriched my experience. Um, I also think this book would be great for people who want an introduction, a simple, easy to read, very digestible introduction to psychoanalysis. Um, it's very clarifying uh, because, you know, I think many people have a very, um, a very, uh, um, they have a misconception of what psychoanalysis is. They have an idea in their mind of what psychoanalysis is and how it works. And um, he really clarifies what, what modern psychoanal psychoanalysis is like. And I really like that. It's a very easy to read um, text for, uh, as an introduction. So that's what I'm reading. And please let me know in the comment section down below, what are you reading? Have you any thoughts on the books that I mentioned today? I am just one reader and I look forward to uh, discussing books with you and I will see you on the next video.